How's it going, guys? Today's video is going to be a little bit different, man. Uh, the water clarity's not been very good for the past three or four weeks. I ended up getting sick, out of work for a week. It took me about two weeks to recover. We are going to talk about how you could catch fish every time you come to the surf. For those of you guys that come down here on vacation, you don't live here, and you want to be able to catch at least, you know, some whiting or something like that when you come down here. You don't want to waste your time like a lot of people do when they come down here. When I was a teenager, guys, and when I was like 10 years old, 11, 12 years old, I'd come down here on vacation maybe once, twice a year, sometimes more, and I'd come down here and I'd grab me, I'd go to Academy and grab me the wrong kind of line, the wrong kind of leaders, pretty much the wrong kind of weights. I mean, everything you could think about. Uh, also, I would go, first thing I'd do is go get some dead shrimp, you know, and I'd come down here to surf and I wouldn't catch anything for years and years and years. Today I'm going to show you how you could come down here and have a really good time fishing. It's not about how big of a fish you catch, it's about just having fun and you know catching some fish at least. So we're going to start with, I'm going to show you the, the clarity of the water. Uh, I'm not actually dressed as you guys can see to be surf fishing. <laughs> I got my hey dudes on and stuff like that. The beaches are packed today, guys. It's double lines of cars down that way. Here, I'm uh, just north of uh, Packery Channel. I'm almost uh, Mustang Island. You are definitely gonna need four wheel drive to get over here. Because you can see where the uh, sand is wet here, but this is what you're gonna have to drive in right here to get to where I'm at. And believe me, it got a little bit scary there back there because I slowed down big time and almost got stuck. But as you can see the water, I'm just going to try to not keep, not get my, my hey dudes wet. It seems to be getting a little bit better now. Today I would almost say, and the birds are hitting the water right there. Man, I'm not dressed to fish, but if I keep seeing that, I'm going to be hooking me up a gold spoon. Uh, there was a sign on the beach when you came in that said heavy currents, rip tides, and stuff like that. So. Water clarity seems to be getting better. I think by this weekend, it should be a lot better to where I can get out here and maybe catch you guys some fish, man. There is a lot of people. This is 4th July today. Happy Independence Day. There's a lot of people on the beach, man. I was lucky to find this one area where I could shoot this video. Let's go ahead and start out with the kind of rod and reels you probably want to show up with down here. Oh, wow, check it out. Portuguese man of war guys. We're gonna go ahead and show you the rod and reels you wanna come down here. Now it doesn't make any sense to buy cheap rod and reels that you get at Academy for 29 bucks, 39 bucks and come down here. You're probably gonna say, well, I only come down here once a year, so you know, it's worth it. Well, once you take that pole home, uh, you can rinse it, do whatever you want. By the time you come down here again, that thing is probably gonna be froze up. I'm gonna show you the rod and reels that I suggest you use coming down here. If you're going to be throwing lures and stuff like that, like gold spoons, top waters, you don't want to get anything more than eight foot. I use these Pen Battle 3 combos that all comes together right here. There's three of them. This is my favorite one, the limited edition blue and white. And uh, I use 4,000 and 5,000 series right here. And they're about eight foot rods. I think this one here is 7.6 or something like that. But these are the ones that you really should get because if you get these, they are gonna, I've had this one and this one for three, three and a half years, and this one maybe a year and a half. These things are awesome. You don't have any problem with the handles freezing up. Uh, I've never had any problems with them. I'll oil them once in, once in a while. I've never had to take them apart. I just oil the handles and, and other places. But they perform. Every time I come out of here, I can guarantee you I can pull it off here and it's gonna work good. So there's three different ones here. Uh, I don't know which one's the four or five thousands. I think this is a five thousand and these are fours. But anyway, for about 150 bucks on Amazon, you could get you one of these and, and have this every time you come down here. So again, guys, don't waste your money on cheap stuff. And then if you're gonna be throwing some lures, now you could use these. I, I, you guys have seen me catch big fish on these using uh, gold spoons and top water and DOA shrimp. If you want to have a light rod set up and you want to really feel 
how that fish is. I would suggest a Pen Fierce 2 or a Pen Fierce, I think they make a Pen Fierce 3, and an inverse rod. These things are pretty freaking cool. Again, I'll put all the links in the description for you guys so you could get them. Now you're probably wondering what kind of line I use. I use nothing but braided line. That's all I use. I love it. It, it casts so much better than any other line that I've used. Now on this pole, I use about 20 pound test braided and there's multiple colors. I use gray on here. I use 12 pound on my light rod setup, 12 pound test, 20 pound test here, blue. This is my sister's pole. She doesn't care for braid. So this is, uh, I believe, mono here, and it's 20 pound as well. So those are the rod and reels that I can tell you that I've had not one issue with them whatsoever. I, neither one of these. They all, every time I pull them off here, I can guarantee you they're gonna work. Whereas the cheap stuff, guys, I can't tell you how many times I've pulled the rod and reel off there and the handle's been froze up or the actual spinning mechanism has been froze up something goes wrong with it and now it just sits in my garage. We're going to go over some baits that you can use out here. There's all kinds of different baits that you can use to catch different fish. I I do use mullet and I don't I don't really have that much luck on mullet. Some people do but I don't. I've used live and dead. The best bait that I've had luck on out here and probably the best bait in the Gulf is going to be ladyfish or skipjack. That cut up is, is awesome bait. You can catch sharks, you can catch redfish, you can catch trout, you can catch pretty much everything. Now you're not gonna catch whiting or you're not gonna catch flounder because you're gonna have too big of a chunk on there. So that's one bait that, that I can tell you right now is perfect. If you can get some ladyfish, if you come out here and you see ladyfish hitting top of the water, get you a little three ounce spoon and throw it out there and you'll catch more than enough bait. You can even catch them off fish bites too. I've caught them off fish bites. But that to me is by far the best bait. Let's go over here and I'll show you a, a second bait that's gonna guarantee you that you're gonna catch something out here. I'm not showing you how to catch big fish every time. I'm showing you how to catch fish. You wanna guarantee catch fish every time as long as the water clarity is pretty good and it's not completely dark sandy looking. You can use fish bites. You can buy these at Walmart, you can buy them on Amazon, and I'll put the Amazon links to all this in the description underneath the video. When you use fish bites, you wanna have multiple uh, colors, pink and white, easy shrimp, and then you have uh, just a regular pink, easy shrimp. And then we've, I brought a couple, they also have fluorescent green. I mean, they have all different colors. So you wanna make sure you have a couple of different colors. And I also have easy clam, and easy crab. All you want to do with fish bites is you just want to put a little tiny piece on the hook and that's it, about that big. I'll show you in a minute because I'm going to demonstrate how I can catch a fish anywhere I can pull up on the beach. Let's get this baited up and I'll show you how to bait this uh, this pompano rig with uh, fish bites and we'll get it out in the water. Here you go guys, that's how small you want that the fish bites, just real small. Pinch it on the hook about like that, make sure the hook's coming through, both lines and we're going to cast it out into the first gut because I'm not getting wet. And a hard head. Another hard head. That's probably all we're going to catch out here with this water that, like that. You got to be real careful with these little things. They'll get you. I'm going to show you the best things to use if you're surf fishing. There's two different setups I use. First one I use is called a pompano rig, and these are Stanfield Tackles pompano rigs right here, which has double hook, so you can bait it up with some fish bites, you know, two little small pieces of fish bites, or you can use some salted shrimp and put on these. I also use what he calls a, a richer rig. If I want to catch some, uh, some redfish, some bigger fish like redfish or big trout, I'll load this up. It's a single hook with some cut ladyfish or mullet, live mullet, or maybe I'll have some live piggy perch, and I'll use that. What are these people going to do when I put a pole out? Because I'm going to be running it from my Jeep. But anyways, here's another one, a single hook. It's a smaller hook, 
You can catch some uh, trout and redfish on this and some drum. Just a single hook. You can get those from Stanfield Tackle as well. The only time I use these guys is when I run out of Stanfield Tackle stuff. You could buy these on Amazon. These are all right. I just like Stanfield Tackles better because uh, you don't have the painted hooks and stuff like that. And the hooks are a little bit smaller. Those are the only rigs that I will use out in the surf. There's a couple of size weight, different weights that I use. And depending on how rough the surf is out there is depending on what weights I use. Like today, I'd probably use about a four, uh, test it out and see if my line goes down the beach. If it doesn't, then we're set. But I'll use sometimes fives and six. Now these weights aren't cheap right here. This is, I believe this is a, uh, a six. So this is a six. This is when it's real, real heavy surf. This works really well. When it's yellow flag or green flag, I'll use pyramid weights. And usually I'll run anywhere from a, a four to a six. When you use the pompano rigs, there is a place to put the actual weight. This right here, if it's green water, that's what I use right there. And I believe this is a, I don't know, it's probably a two or a three. But those are the type of weights that I use. This is what a pompano rig looks like when it's, when it's on your line. You see the two hooks and then the weight at the bottom? Also guys, when you come out here and you're using dead shrimp, you want to go ahead and salt that shrimp before you come down here. Uh, even if you're in a hotel, go to run to H-E-B, get you some kosher salt. You can get it in a box for two bucks or whatever. Put it in a container, stick your shrimp in there overnight, and they'll be ready in the morning. The reason why you want to use salted shrimp is because it'll stay on that hook better. I've actually reeled in fish with the shrimp still on there. You're not going to do that with regular dead shrimp that you get from the uh, the bait store. If you get shrimp from the bait store, you're going to have to peel it before you put it in the salt. It has to be peeled. What I do is I go to HEB and I'll buy like jumbo shrimp that's already peeled and I'll use that. Or I go buy Paul's Seafood down here, even in Port Aransas, I think there's a Paul's Seafood there, and buy a pound of shrimp or however much you want. Stick it in there, leave it overnight, and you got yourself some tough shrimp and the fish, fish will eat it just like regular shrimp and it'll stay on your hook a lot longer especially when you cast. For those of you that cast and your shrimp flies off, hey, it's very simple, man. It costs you two or three bucks for a thing of salt and then whatever the shrimp is. So I would use salted shrimp. Using live shrimp out of here, you're gonna get things like hardheads and, and whiting and small fish like that just eating that up. So if you wanna spend $16 for a quart or whatever it is, uh, to lose most of it to these small fish and go ahead. But I, I never use live shrimp surf fishing. I use live shrimp back in the bays and I'll use it off a pier or something like that, but never, never surf fishing. Or off the jetties on the channel side. I also want to show you what kind of lures I use. If it's yellow flag or if it's gold flag and the surf's not too bad. First one's going to be what's called a rooster popper. If it's green flag and there's hardly no water movement, then I will use what's called a rooster popper. I'll put the links to all of this down in the description, all right? They have uh, the green and kind of white bottom with blue speckles is my favorite one. There's different colors and I've caught fish on each and every color. Now they have this one here and then they have the bigger one. Then you got the gold spoon, which I left in the wrapper because these hooks are kind of really sharp. It's a three ounce gold spoon. This is what I caught in this video, you could watch up at the top here, whichever side it comes up. I use the gold spoon to catch all those fish. Now I also use a silver spoon that's the same uh, three ounce. Silver spoon works well as well, but the gold spoon seems to outperform the silver spoon. Now I will use six ounce spoons when I'm at the jetties and places like that because there's, you know, giant, big giant fish out there. There's big giant fish in here. You never know what you're going to catch. but. If I know there's some big kings or big jacks or, you know, it's, it's uh, big bull reds and stuff like that, I will throw a six ounce off the jetties. But there you go right there. And these are a little bit expensive, but they're well worth it. Just follow, follow those few little steps I showed you and, and, and you'll end up catching some fish. Even on a worse day, man, you usually pull in whiting. So I wanted to get the, a video up, guys, because I haven't put up a video in a while from being sick and the surf looking a mess. and. Uh, but I've, out, I've been out fishing. I mean, we went 90 miles clear up to almost Port Lavaca and fished some fresh water. 
and I caught one good size uh, catfish you can see right here. Uh, but that's about it. And then we caught uh, Saturday, was it, no, it was um, Sunday. No, this past Saturday, we caught a couple of hardheads like at the 20 mile marker down on pins, me and my sister and her husband. But anyway, guys, uh, just wanted to get a video up and touch base with you guys and tell you I'm still here. I'm still waiting for surf conditions to get better because that's what I enjoy to do. And there's a lot of little white birds hitting the water out there. Now what you want to do guys is you want to look for any cuts in the waves, the breaking waves. You can see right there where there's one wave that's breaking to the left and one to the right, but there's nothing right there in the middle. That's where you want to throw your line. That's where the bait fish are going to be coming through and you're going to have your, your predators waiting on the other end for the bait fish to come through with that heavy current that's getting squished through that little column of water. So that's where you want to throw your line. So always look for that when you're driving down the beach trying to find a good spot to uh, throw your lines and to spend the day. Also, you want to move around. If you're, if you're on the beach and you're sitting there for about an hour and you're not catching anything, well, pack yourself up and change location. Now sometimes I know you guys got kids and you got a wife and everything and you might have a canopy out and stuff like that and you don't want to do that. Well, that's perfectly fine. But if you're by yourself and uh, you're not catching anything within an hour, go ahead and move on down the beach there. Guys, I don't claim to be a professional surf fisherman or anything like that, so all this is just my knowledge that, I, that I've learned since I've been down here. Uh, some of you guys, well, quite a few of you guys have, have messaged me on Facebook or Instagram or YouTube and asked me if I do like a guide service where I take you guys surf fishing. I would love to do that. I just don't have my license or anything like that. Uh, I guess that person doesn't know you're not supposed to drive in between the cars like that. But it's 4th of July, 4th of July weekend. There's a lot of dummies down here. But anyways, let's get back to what I was saying. Oh, they drove through there because they didn't want to go through the high sand. Um, I'm not a professional surf, surf fisherman. Someday I hope to be, you know, as far as, as, as being down here and learning from people like Nick at Breakaway Tackle and a couple other people that I watch. Uh, my biggest problem, guys, is trying to read the surf. It's not as easy as some of these guys make it sound like it's just easy, you know? It's not really that easy. So to be able to read the surf is a, a big key of if you're going to catch some big old trout or redfish. You could pull usually anywhere on the beach and catch whiting. That's not a big deal. But if you want to catch some trout and redfish, you need to be in the right spot. And uh, there's all kinds of techniques that you can use to find, to make sure you're in the right spot. And one of them is, just earlier I seen two pelicans hitting the water out there. And that was in within reach if I waded out there waist deep. So if you're driving down the beach and you see a bunch of birds hitting the water, you want to immediately stop and put you on some kind of lure like a top water or a gold spoon or a silver spoon. And just wait out there and just cast in there and keep casting in there. I guarantee you're going to catch something. All right, so that's one, one sign of there's fish in the area. Another one's going to be where you see the waves breaking there and you see the waves breaking there, but right there in the middle, see that? They're not breaking. And you keep watching that. If it happens again and again and again, that's what they call a cut in between the sandbars. So there's a lot of current coming through there, which is going to wash the bait fish through there. You're going to have the predators either on the other side waiting for the bait fish. So you just watch the surf and where you see, you know, a cut where the waves here, waves here, and nothing breaking in the middle. You want to you want to throw your line in there. Uh, also, if you're able to see a riptide where, where the current's taking the water straight out from the beach, <clears throat> that's another excellent place to fish. I know some of you guys got kids and stuff like that, and you got a wife and everything like that, and your wife and kids, they just want to go to the beach. They don't, they don't care about fishing or whatever. So you just basically got to pull up on the beach wherever, wherever you can. So kind of stall your wife <laughs> and just drive down the beach and just tell her, I'm looking for the perfect spot, man. And don't say anything about fishing because she probably, if she don't fish, she don't care about fishing. So just say, I'm walking, I'm looking for the perfect spot. And uh, just drive down the beach until you see something that's, that kind of looks unusual. You know, even with the water hitting right up here, even with the water hitting up here, if you see one area hitting way up here and both sides are real low, stop right there. 
So there's all kinds of different techniques that you can use. All right, so I showed you guys the rod and reels. Most of them I use are under eight foot. Now I do have two 12 footers, but I made the mistake on the rule that I told you guys about buying cheap equipment and I bought cheap, cheap 12 footers, the whole combo for 60 bucks a piece. And guess what? They're both failing. And I, I tell you the truth, I've never caught a big fish on them yet. <laughs> All my big fish have been on these pin battle threes and that little inverse rod with the uh, pin, pin fierce two. So, you know, the good thing about 12 foot and 14 foot rods is if you're afraid to get in the water because you're afraid of sharks or you're afraid of stingrays or anything like that, then you could stand on the beach and you could hit the second gut from standing on the beach. Uh, I'll put... Uh, Breakaway Tackle's uh, YouTube channel where he'll, he'll show you how to cast and stuff like that. I'll put the link underneath this video. When we talk about guts, we're talking about the first gut and the second gut is usually where you're gonna wanna fish. So when you throw a line out, you wanna throw your first line in the first gut, throw a line in the second gut, and then throw one in between the first and second gut. When you do hook up with a fish, if you keep hooking up a fish with a fish in the first gut, then you know you wanna throw your other lines in the first gut. I appreciate you watching this video. Hopefully this will help you guys out that come down here on vacation or maybe some of you guys that are local that maybe don't surf fish a lot. You fish more in the bays and maybe on boats in the bays or whatever. It's uh, very simple. You know, use the right equipment and uh, you'll get the job done. Appreciate you watching the video. All the links of everything I talked about will be in the description. Uh, there'll be Amazon affiliate links. You guys don't pay any more. But every time you buy something or whatever, I make a little penny or two, and it helps support the channel. Hope you guys have a great 4th of July. Hope you guys catch a lot of fish. Peace, guys. We'll see you next video when we catch some fish.